Hi everyone, Mike Smell here for Simulation TV. In this episode of Simulation in Action, we're going to be looking at the cladding tool using Robot Structural Analysis Professional. Today, Tomas Fadula will be joining me remotely to go through a click-by-click -click demonstration. Before we get started with the demonstration, I'll go through and give you a high-level overview of what you're going to see today. So our problem description, we'll be looking at an exercise at how to distribute loads in the modeling stage using the cladding tool inside of Robot Structural Analysis. The key learning objectives for this presentation will be how to define claddings, how to distribute loads, and how to display generated loads. Now let's join Tomas in looking at this demonstration. Autodesk Robot Structure Analysis Professional allows the definition of many different types of loads. Depending on load duration and type, different natures of defined load, for example, that, live, wind, seismic, etc., can be created. Structural engineers can easily add, delete, as well as modify parameters of any different load case. To help the design process and provide structural engineers with the right tools at the right time, Robot Structural Analysis Professional provides the cladding tool for applying loads and helping to streamline the process. The cladding tool is an auxiliary object used to define loads. Structural engineers can take advantage of cladding when generating bar loads from planar objects and snow wind loads in 3D geometry. It allows to define real structure objects that do not participate in the load capacity of a structure, such as panel walls and roofing. And then you can apply planar, linear and concentrated loads to claddings. So let me show you how to deal with claddings and how to take advantage of this tool in the modeling stage. First, I'm going to use the cladding tool to define these elements in the roof and wall planes. During the definition, you can specify how applied loads are distributed. The trapezoidal method can distribute the load from the cladding to all objects located in the contour and plane of the cladding which makes this tool powerful and speeds up the generation of loads. Since my claddings are done, now it's time to apply loads to them. So let me add some planar loads to the wind load case and the snow one. Right now, let's take a closer look at the loads generated automatically in the cladding planes. To display correctly generated loads, we should generate the calculation model. As you can see, you can display the colorful load distribution regions, which gives you better understanding how a particular cladding works. On all claddings calculated with the trapezoidal and triangular method, Robot displays maps showing to which supports individual regions belong. Drawing a map consists of applying colors to all the contours of surfaces in such a way that within one slab or cladding a border does not separate contours filled with the same color. Now I'm going to modify my wall claddings to distribute loads only to beams. In the roof plane I would like to distribute my loads to purlines only and this time I'm going to adjust my distribution in another way. You can select objects that lie in the plane of a cladding and do not carry loads. For example, these can be elements of roof bracing that do not carry the load transferred from the roofing. You can select objects using one of the following ways. Using options in the inspector dialog box using the trapezoidal and triangular method options dialog box. So first, let me select all rafters and then I'm going to ignore these elements using the inspector dialog box. Next, let me select all bracings in the roof plane and this time I will ignore them via dedicated dialog box.
let's regenerate the calculation model and let's take a look at the final result. As you saw, cladings are a really powerful tool. Thanks to cladings, you can quickly generate and distribute loads to selected structural elements. Thanks for the demonstration, Tomas. So in summary, what you've seen today is how to define claddings, how to distribute loads, and how to display generated loads. If you have any questions about this episode, feel free to reach out to us at the Sim Squad. Thanks for watching.